eight kids and all day. <laughs> Your kids work as I know that's what's happening. Well, it's fantastic tonight to have uh, Mr. Wes Levis with us. He's probably son David also sitting next to me here in the front row. And I think in the year 2000 we moved in here, November 2000. Still kids going. In the year 2000 we actually moved into this building in, in November. And it would have been a month or two prior to that that Wes last spoke in our church. We were in the little hall down there at the corner of 50 uh, Road and Valdez Road and Wes came and spoke there. And we thought we'd come and show him our building that we hadn't yet moved into, and there was no power on here. We brought Wes up here in the dark, and a little flashlight, and, and showed him around in here. And uh, he, he was impressed. Well, as a visitor, makes you feel as impressed anyway. And he said, I'll see you later. Well, he's back 10 years later. He's back here. And now he gets to preach in this, in this church. So, uh, Wes has brought some books. I know a number of you have read Wes's books. I would have heard a story. I don't know if you're here tonight. I heard the story that someone was coming because they'd read one of Wes's books, picked it up at Jumble Sale, and thought, wow, that's, that's great. And uh, if I ever get to hear that guy speak, I will. And then came to our mobs or our playgroup, one of those, and saw we were advertising Wes coming, said, oh, I'll come. So that's it, Wes. And Wes has got books on that shelf, one near the doors, all Wes's material. Uh, they've purchased everything is 20 bucks, right? Everything. Anything there is 20 bucks. Not everything for 20 bucks, not all the books. <laughs> one is 20. And uh, so I didn't bring any money. That's okay, we've got FPOS. All right? So you can buy it on FPOS and I've got your card with you. So you'll want to do that. And uh, right now, we don't want to waste any more time promoting the books. They're going to sell themselves later on. I want you to give Wes a great big round of applause. He comes up here to speak for us. Here we go. Help. 
It's just like I'm just catching. So I, I'm driving home thinking, that's great. I'm going to get home. My family's going to be sleeping soundly. And I'm just going to be there, lonely. It's going to hit me about noon. I'm going to be hit with such tiredness because i got a lousy night's sleep. And, 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 and basically the afternoon is going to be a write-off. And, 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 and in fact, the whole day is just going to be terrible. And at that time, I, I completely talked myself into that day being not a day that the Lord hath made. <laughs> Indeed, I was not going to rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> I want you to pick that up and put it to the side in your mind for a moment. Um, I live in uh, Southern California, although I'm a Perth boy, born in Perth. Like, every time I come back to this place, I go, why on Perth did I leave this place? <laughs> it is so good. So next time you have an opening in your staff, I just threw one this morning, okay. Or maybe in another 10 years. You know, um, you know so we have, uh, California was designed around the automobile. You know, the bus system's lousy, you know, it costs you, you know, a thousand dollars to get anywhere in a taxi, you know, no, no trains. Perth has really got it together in the transportation. America, just, they love their cars, especially Southern California. So lots of different varieties of cars. And when I come over here, I, you, you know, you've got some cars here that we don't even have over there. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I've evaluated, evaluated for a long time in my life, you know, what, what's probably the most reliable car to drive? And, uh, you know, I want to throw this out to you. This is Talkback Church. <laughs> You know, what, what do you think, you know, what model of motor vehicle do you think is, is the most reliable vehicle on the road, you know, according to your estimation? Come on, talk it, yell it. Holden! A Holden! A Holden! Oh, right. A Toyota? Somebody else from over here? A Camaro? Honey, you are cool. Somebody else? Nobody said a Ford? Don't you like Fords and Mercedes? Let me tell you, in my opinion, in my estimation, the most reliable car on the road is the VW Beetle. Hang on, hang on now. I'm not talking about the newfangled, curvy one. I'm talking about the old 1960s, 70s, VW Beetle, I think, uh, Jacob, you've got a picture of There we go. That's the one I'm talking about. You know why? The VW Beetle keeps going even when it's broken. I mean, it's just, it, it, it can be down to three cylinders and still get you to where you need to go. It won't sound pretty. You know, people will hear you coming from a long way away, but you know, it just a VW, you know, if it runs out of battery or something, you can always clutch start it. You know, and, and whenever you see a VW Beetle, uh, you know, whenever you see a car, in, especially in Southern California, on the side of the road, engulfed in flames, invariably it's one of those. <laughs> now, the automotive engineers tell me it's because the, uh, the fuel line is too close to the exhaust manifolds. And uh, when it drips petrol on the exhaust manifold, it, uh, it starts a fire. And it, so I don't buy into that for a moment. I think that the VW Beetle, it, it always, it, it burns up on the side of the road because it wants to go out doing what it was meant to do. <laughs> go from point A to a point B. Oh yes, the sophisticated BMW. You know, when it runs into a few mechanicals, it just exits and slinks off somewhere and, 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 and gets fixed, but no, not the VW Beetle. It just goes, my time is ready. And it pulls over and it bursts up in front of 